Welcome. So let's say you want to get the extra life donation tracker. You want to get the latest version. Um, basically, you just come to this page, djotaku.github.io slash el donation tracker. And you just click right here on Windows Download. And then it'll download it for you. And um, if you want to see um, the release notes in case there's anything in there like hey don't use this or use that or whatever you just click here you'll see that this latest release was a bug fix and so it would definitely be important to use it um, because otherwise things might not work they were expected and there's some other information here um, and then a link to the instructions um, further down this page is um, video you're watching. Well, right now this is the old video because I have to put this one together that I'm recording now. Um, and then at the bottom, documentation in case you want to go see how to use the program. Um, if you don't want to use a video, if you want to see it written down, or if you want to contribute as a developer. And it looks like this. There's installation and usage and so on and so forth. So, um, in Chrome, you can show in folder like this to see the program that you just downloaded. Um, there may be a different way to do it in whatever your browser you're using. And um, so this one here is in downloads. And if you right click, you want to extract all. And now I'll click here, show extracted files when complete, extract. And that'll do its thing. It'll take a little bit. It's about a 100 meg file. Right, and there's um, all the files that uh, are needed to run the program. And all you need to do is double click on GUI here. If you see this, um, click on more info and run anyway. And then you will get this command line window and you'll get um, this uh, GUI window here. And we'll come back to what you do with this momentarily. All right, this portion of the instructions are gonna be the same whether you're running Windows or Linux. Um, so the fact that this is uh, Windows here um, shouldn't concern you. Um, the only thing that should be different on Linux is that um, you'll have a Linux um, command line, and this will be different depending on the uh, window decorations that you're using in um, KDE or GNOME or i3 or whatever the heck program you're using um, if you're running this in Linux. You may be wondering what just happened. Weren't we just in Windows? Well, for version 4.3, the only thing that has changed for the user is here in the settings. And so rather than record the entire thing all over again, I decided to just um, go over the settings here and insert that into uh, the other videos because everything else stays exactly the same. So um, once you've loaded up the settings, um, I've added a few new buttons, but we'll go through everything from scratch. So uh, what you want to do first is enter your participant ID and I'll show you exactly where you get that from. If you sign into your Extra Life site, you'll see at the end of the URL, it says participant ID equals and a number, 401280. And if you look here, that's exactly what I have, 401280. So you just copy that number over. And one of the new features I've added in 4.3 is the ability to validate your participant ID in case you typed it incorrectly and you wanna check. So you just click there and it was able to get to the API point uh, where we're going to grab all the data for you. So that means it's a valid ID. It's entirely possible you could have mistyped someone else's ID. <laughs> so if the numbers look weird, check that. But uh, at least it's a valid ID, right? It's not going to, the program's going to work. So I like to keep all my, um, my text files that the program produces in my Dropbox folder. That way, if I'm running it on uh, Linux to try and test something, I can uh, do that and still play in um, Windows and still have all the text updating. 
currency symbol, your pr oh, so if you want to select something different, right, you click that button. Uh, the currency symbol is a dollar sign. You can change that to whatever you want. That'll appear anywhere that the donations appear. Then your team ID, you get similar to the way that you get your um, extra life ID. So here's my team. I'm in Giant Bomb. I'm not the leader of the team. Um, I'm in that team. And here it says team ID equals 50394. If you go here, 50394, and you can also validate it once again. And um, this data uh, is filled in because I've already got data. I've run this program before. For you, this will all be blank. Um, but you can see here's the team captain of the team I'm on, the goal, and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, if you look over here, um, there's a lot of data that I show you here. Some of it's warnings and some of it is just for your information. And if you open this program on Windows, you'll see a little command line window that comes along when you open it up. If you're on Linux, you'll either be running this through PyPy or Git clone. And so you'll already be um, in a command line window. So you can just look here for various information that it's telling you. And if anything looks weird, that's kind of your first indication. And if anything goes wrong, this gives you the data you need to file a bug report so that I can try and fix it. Um, and in the future, I plan to use a uh, new Python module that'll kind of allow me to make it red if it's in, if it's a uh, bug and green if it's just information and so on and so forth. Um, all right, so, uh, right, so you can validate that as well and that lets you know that that team exists. So donors to display, um, you'll see this later when I load up either um, OBS or XSplit, depending on which video you're watching. And you'll see that this controls how many donors show up. At the moment, I've only got two donors. So setting this to five is kind of like just saying five is my upper bound, but it doesn't do anything weird. Um, if I set that to one, then it would only show Sean because he was the last person to donate. If you have a lot of donors that donate um, when you're live, you might want to make this a higher amount because you'll be able to use this to scroll across the screen. Um, another uh, set of features here, there's a tracker image and a donation sound. I'll show you what that's for in a minute. Um, but uh, the new thing that I've got here is if you need to grab the defaults, so you can just grab from GitHub and it'll grab it it'll put it here it'll do put it in the equivalent place in uh, Windows and then it'll change this here to link to it I, I was testing it before that's why it already has that uh, location you can also pick any image you want uh, what you what you want is a image file like a um, oh I've cleared it so you do actually want to not hit cancel but pick an image uh, I'll just do this again there we go um, so you want an image that has a transparent background and now I'll jump back over to Windows so you can see what that means. This image of me here is an example of a transparent background image. So um, if I were to take this image, I would appear solid and anything I put this on top of um, would just appear right behind me. For example, I use this when I'm making um, YouTube video um, uh, thumbnails and so uh, if I turn this on right here, you can see there's the background right behind me. See, so you want an image that's like that. Okay, and same thing with the sound. You can grab the sound from GitHub, and I'll show you what this does in just a minute. Um, and that's going to go along with these buttons here. So before I get to that, I just want to say whenever you change anything, what you want to do is hit persist settings, especially if you're on Linux. Um, if you hit save, it's most likely not going to work for you if you're doing it through pip it'll probably work for you if you're doing it within the git clone uh, and if you're on windows you definitely want to persist settings because what that allows is that every time there's a new um, release um, every time there's a new release it will allow you to carry over your settings. You don't have to redo the settings every time because as soon as you start up, it's gonna look for persistent settings. Uh, if you do persist settings, it's gonna save it in a special location. Uh, and on Linux, that's in your .config under your home directory in Windows. There's a similar place. It's basically your roaming profile and it'll go in there. 
All right, so now let's talk about what all this here is for. Uh, so this is for your tracker. Um, what you want to use this for is in OBS or XSplit, you'll put this as a source right above the video game you're playing, or let's say you're recording yourself cooking or whatever. This will be the topmost video. You'll tell OBS or Chroma Key, I mean, oh, sorry, OBS or XSplit to Chroma Key, and therefore it'll erase the green background and all you'll see is the image that you selected, which is why you want it to have a transparent background. So I'll show you what the defaults look like. You got a donation. So there you go. Um, you see it's white text, it's that image, and then you heard the default sound. Let me do that one more time. You got a donation. Okay. Uh, so it could be any MP3 you want, as long as it's about 15 seconds long. Um, you probably want either, you can use my daughter's voice there saying you got a donation, or you can use like Mario coin sound or something that kind of gets the attention of yourself and the people watching the stream to, to look and see who donated. Uh, so new features that I've got here are the ability to change the tracker font and color and background. Uh, maybe green doesn't work for you. Maybe the image that you selected has a lot of green. And so if you've ever seen people do green screen, when you wear green, you're invisible. So you don't, you can't do that. So what you want to do is come here, pick a color. Let's say blue. Now the background's blue. That looks like uh, a blue screen blue. And so it should be pretty easy for OBS or XSplit to make that disappear. Now you got a like donation. This. Um, and so one important thing for both the font and the background, if you were to hit cancel, now it becomes black. And the way you fix that is over here, you move this back up to white, pick whatever color you want. And now that's your new color. Uh, when you're done, don't forget to hit persist settings so that it saves this color. Um, and same thing with the font. You can pick any font you want. Um, size 52 is a pretty good font size, but you can pick any size you want. Uh, more than that, it's probably going to go off screen. So you kind of want 52 or less, but not too small or you won't be able to read it. But yeah, any font that you want. And then uh, for the color, it's um, any color you want. Uh, let's say I pick this weird green color. So now you got a like donation. That. So those are your settings. Again, hit persist settings when you're done and it'll save those for you. And that'll be what you'll use from now on. Again, I recommend uh, having this either be um, chroma key green or blue screen blue if you want to make it really easy for OBS or XSplit to automatically get rid of that background and then um, just have the image and the um, and the text show up. So that just about covers everything that is brand new in the settings. So we'll go back to past me who's uh, most likely on Windows and we'll show you what to do next. All right, and this is how you would configure EL Donation Tracker for XSplit. Now, I haven't used XSplit in about five years, so um, there's gonna be a couple things that I'm not sure how to alter, um, but I'll assume that if you're using XSplit, you know how to use XSplit, you just wanna know how you should use um, EL Donation Tracker with XSplit. So let's start off with the um, Donation Tracker. So that is uh, just to demonstrate again. Here's your tracker. Here's your GUI. So if you hit test alert, you got a donation. that comes up, that goes back. So that's how that works. So um, how do we use that within XSplit? Well, what you wanna do is go to add source, then go to screen capture, window capture, and look for uh, tracker, GUI.exe. Depending on how many windows open, you have open, this may be a long or short list. So we bring that, uh, oops, that was the wrong one. I meant to say, let me remove that. I meant to say, look for tracker, uh, GUI.exe, there we go. So there's the tracker window, all right. All right, so it's there, but uh, we don't necessarily want it to look like this, right? So let's right click on here. That'll bring up your editor for the tracker. Um, so the first thing you wanna do is um, go to color and click chroma key. So now you'll see that the green disappears. 
So let's trigger that again so you can kind of see what that's going to look like. You got a donation. Of course, we have a black background, so it's not going to help that you can't see the words. So let's see if we can change that. All right, so I've added an image slideshow behind it. So now let's trigger that. You got a donation. There you go. Again, not the perfect situation there. And um, still got to figure out exactly how to change the font you color on Windows on Linux. It's nice and white. But, you know, you get the idea, right? So it'll appear there. Um, but still, we don't want necessarily the, um, you know, the top bars and all that stuff. So we can come over here, go to layout and on cropping. And just go ahead and crop. Oop, might have gone a little too far there. Okay, so just kind of crop it in here and crop it in there and crop it in there and crop it in there until you've got something that doesn't show anymore and then you got a donation there you go so that's how you add that and again um uh, not exactly the best thing to have behind it but you can kind of see what's going on so uh, the big thing that we generate here are a bunch of text files so we're going to add a source uh, we're going to go text then you're going to do custom script edit script and then here you're going to say load text from a local file then click on this dot 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 and we're going to go to where we set them remember i said i do mine in dropbox so we come in here and do um let's do the last and uh, donation names horizontal and let's see what else let's go to settings all right update text all right and then just do a scroll and you'll kind of see it scrolling let's uh, speed it up a bit whoa now you obviously don't want to do it that fast but that kind of shows you what you can do here so you can have you know the last 10 uh, donations and you can have that scrolling and every time someone donates that'll update uh, I'm gonna stop that scroll um, you can also um, have eh, I guess I'll add it as a different one so let's add another text uh, where'd that go oh I guess I hit cancel so it went away uh, let's add a, <laughs> another text source and we'll go custom script and script put from file this time we'll do the uh, goal so this is how much we hope to hope to raise 500 there's 500 <clears throat> now remember I said I'm not a uh, I'm not a uh, XSplit guy I haven't used XSplit in a long time so I'm not sure how you change font size in XSplit but I'm sure it's nice and easy to change but that's one example we'll hit OK so that stays we'll add another source just for one final example, with custom script, edit script, load from file, and then uh, say the team captain, right? If you're part of a team, and then hit OK. And so there's the team captain's part of his name, since again, fonts are giant in XSplit for some reason, I'm not sure of. Uh, definitely not like that in uh, an OBS, but. Uh, Let's see if we come over here, if we can figure it out. Calibri outline. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. But again, I'm assuming that if you're using XSplit, you know how to use XSplit. You know how to add text because maybe you're making title screens or whatever. I'm just showing you that how you grab and use the text um, from um, EL Donation Tracker. And as things update, so um, let's say instead of uh, our goal, this was the amount uh, raised. So, oops, let's go. Uh, let's go here. Edit script and let's see total raised update so I've raised 50 bucks so far uh, so each time someone donates while Yale donation tracker is running it'll update that text file and when it updates that text file it'll update the text on your screen so this number will grow as people donate and so um, that's how you can use Yale donation tracker so um, happy streaming, good luck, and remember, it's for the kids.